people, Seth here. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Hey, hey, Ren. Shisu Saicholi. Oi, oi, Mina. Sesu Kokoni. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. 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 If I sound a little different, it's because. It's because you're having a psychotic episode. Hey, hey, people. Epilepsy warning. I'm serious. You have about three seconds. Paul Anthony Romero here. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. I'm doing my part. Are you? Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Hello, my little dart monkeys. Question. What did you want to be when you grew up? If you answered, I wanted to be trapped in a steel, sweaty container with three other men, then, oh boy, I got just the game for you. We'll start small. 200 people, which sounds like nothing. But fun fact, did you know that there's at least 15 countries with absolutely no army? Also, the standing military force of Iceland is like uh, 200 people. They have four planes and uh, four ships. What I'm saying is, we have options. Now that all the epileptics are either dead or convulsing, let's have a pleasant time. This episode is brought to you by RPG Codex and Bad Dragon, both great gaming websites thoroughly recommended. While many college professors would charge thousands of dollars for a history degree, you can personally experience the horrors of war for the low, low price of completely free. Father, father, when I grow up, I want to be a UX designer. <gasps> you bring dishonor to a family. No son of mine will ever create a good user interface. Get these notions out of your head. Now sit down for dinner. Your mother made your favorite. Tortured duck penis. Very nutritious. This might not be politically correct to say, but there's no way to sugarcoat it without uh, making you even larger. You're a fat fuck. Use borrowed money to make more money, to make more banks, to take more loans, to borrow more money. Then upgrade your bank to 250 or monkeynomics with the descriptor for when you're too big to fail, thus creating the Federal Reserve. An upside of being a mage is that you can still use emotes while spellcasting, so you can keep thrusting away as you electrocute your enemies to death. To keep it working, I ripped out the thermal sensor, which means if I flip it over, I can reliably cook eggs on the surface. So while you are blindly fumbling around in the dark, your scout has just quantum tunneled into another area code and directly into a cave leech. This is widely considered to be a violation of the NAP, so you're well within your rights to deploy the MAP, Minor Attracted Projectile. Please understand, this was before we had internet. I didn't know any better, so I had to make do. It's like Plato's allegory of a cave, except in this cave, everyone's a degenerate. If necromancers weren't available, my next best option was genies, medusas, and if I'm very desperate, water elementals. Confirming the belief that the only people who consume energy drinks are teenagers and bug men, the Sajiki have a high demand for monster energy. Maybe a piece of Yugoslavia lives inside me. Maybe in a past life, I was a mortar shell aimed at Croatians. Sure, it's hard to get into, but then again, so are nursing homes. Cult of Storms, however, can be accurately summarized as race war now, kill every human that ever lived. These are probably the same edgelords sitting on elvish discords, making a little dark age edits all day. The only numbers they know are human on elf crime statistics, and their favorite topic of conversation is uh, how much better life was before they came to the Valley of Wonders. These elves are beyond basement dwellers, they straight up live underground, completely relatable. I know that if I was ever invaded, I would tunnel deep into the Earth's crust and live inside my goon cave for the next hundred years. Also, don't worry about the anime art style. I've done some clever substitutions to make this video more approachable by a Western audience. Enjoy. But I don't drink tea because they tampered my water supply and ever since I started drinking from a public tap, I've been getting more and more of these androgynous body pillows. Everybody gangster until the Churchill starts vaping. They do temporarily suffer from a lack of manpower. That is, until you reach late game, where Saruman begins to command the very mud to rise up and reinforce your squads with Urukai. It's nice to hope for the best, but not everyone gets a happy ending. And, uh, I'm not talking about myself. I'll be fine. Everybody hooked on Xanax? Yeah. <laughs> Lamau. Lol, even. Uh, my sincerest condolences, you are screwed. One of the most stable ways to do this is torrenting, or, as it's more commonly known, 
trying before buying. Next, you're gonna get trolled by the Chinese because the developers think it's really funny that there's an almost certain guarantee that you just rolled a Yao Guai as one of your starting characters. Let me explain, white boy. I won the bid, but I don't have 56,000. But uh, they don't know that. The auction ends, it's time to pay. I can't pay. I am under arrest, but I'm not because I am a mannequin made of straw. I never went to the auction. I took a clone pill and sent my body double. And that is a good summary of the auction house experience. It's not about what we bid on, it's about why we do it. We do it to flex on the poor. First, you gotta get chummy with the Umpani or the Trang. This is the choice between authoritarian rhinos or literal bugmen that reproduce faster than India. The precise live geolocation of one in four Americans watching this is already in the hands of people who surely have your best interests in mind. Hey, have you ever been audited by the tax man? Let me tell you, it's a lot of fun. Today, I'll be covering games my mom likes in the event that she finds this channel and finds finds out that I am, in fact, not working as a stockbroker. At this point, the lie is so deep that it's no longer a lie. I've had to learn about stock options to live this double life, and I have to trade shit coins to sell the fiction. Turns out, it's not a question of how strong you are. It's a question of how many apples you brought. Hey, ever since Quebec left Canada, you... You can't call it a street anymore. It's a fucking war zone out there. And getting a voice actor alive into city limits with most of their limbs still attached? That's not happening. You're not gonna survive a first dead zone without a paramilitary escort. And that's a cost the studio can't afford. This game's release was met with heavy criticism from Russia, stating that portraying the Eastern Front as a slaughterhouse where civilians were conscripted to fight with a single lever-action rifle between five or six people was inaccurate because by by the time you get to use it, realistically, you're a group of free. A great way to find out is to visit them directly and prank them by sneaking inside their school. Once they catch you, they'll give you a proper introduction. Break your knees, snap your spine, and gouge your eyes out. The other sects aren't very sociable. Perhaps this little game from Austria accidentally communicated something that it never intended. That, for the cogs and gears of modern society to keep spinning, it becomes inevitable that the fate and destiny of many men and women inside the system is to be consumed by the system. Or maybe they just didn't really think about it. I hope you've enjoyed my TED talk on why we should reinstate capital punishment. Next time, child labor. Is it really labor if we don't pay? You gotta turn those woodland creatures into woodland Twinkies, because if you don't, they won't survive. Think about it. If you're stealing shit from a pharaoh, you're actually stealing shit he needs in the afterlife. It's like you're playing Gmod survival, but with God. But God's multiplayer session doesn't have anti-cheat. And as you try to chow down a fig, it fucking despawns. So you reach for another, it also despawns. And now you're naked. I woke up to find my Amazon recommending me a statue of Baphomet, some effigy sticks to burn as offerings, and uh, am I allowed to say this? A crack pipe. Everything you need to do a little magic. So enjoy the small amount of hedonism afforded to you, because you'll be the last generation with any amount of freedom. The desire to emigrate is so strong that people simply phase through walls, reinforcing the theory that even lower on Maslow's hierarchy of needs is the physiological requirement for a human being to evade taxation. As weird as it sounds, you come for the ass, you stay for the gameplay. You can even automate the whole process by replacing your entire store with vending machines, eliminating unnecessary human contact and streamlining the process of hands exchanging money. Who needs social distancing when our employees are unpaid, unfeeling golems whose only purpose is to serve you watermelon at competitive prices? This isn't a problem for a regular human being. Hardcore players will, however, pathologically blame everyone but themselves for dying and demand and a server rollback each time it happens. This pathological behavior extends into their private life, as many of them have, unfortunately, lost custody of the kids. Siphoning alimony payments into microtransactions ensures that their spouses receive minimal support. Their children may have mandatory visitation days, but they universally hate it. One child I talked to, Timothy, was brutally beaten with a bamboo stick after he picked evasion over a health node on the passive tree. And you know what? 
he got off easy. Size, wind resistance, conductivity, and horoscope of the ammunition against the horoscope of the armor determines damage. Most 88mm shells are made in June, making them a cancer, while most of the bulk production of German armor was late September, making it a Libra. Cancer typically defeats Libra, unless Mercury is in retrograde, in which case all bets are off. Based on old save files I found from when I was 12 years old, I can tell you with high certainty that the most popular type titles everyone picked were Assassin, Necromancer, and Reaper. We were really edgy kids back then. Originally, this game produced a lot of controversy after a Might and Magic player smacked dead a Hindu, believing he was a follower of Ba. Hard to believe, but true. And if you let me edit the wiki article, I can prove it too. Race. Is there a link between race and I? Consider the possibility that you live in a tyrannical society where, at any time, you can be muzzled, beaten, and put into captivity until you die. Considering these things, maybe it's not a joke. Maybe you're the clown and the punchline is your entire existence. The Merchant's Guild also makes an appearance in this game, since every merchant is either a crossdresser, a trap, or transitioning into a trap. Do you like bananas? How about being peeled like a banana? Because for about half the banana trees in this game, the fruit comes to them. Think of a woman as a bowling ball, because just like a bowling ball, a woman has correct. She's got three of them. Originally, there was a joke here. I thought it was funny enough to justify getting demonetized by four kids. So yes, technically, this is still a fantasy game. But if you want a more fitting title, it's uh, Harry Potter and the Yugoslavic War Tribunal. Horrendous at the front, but holy shit business at the back. I've heard the cliche of that's no ass, it's a dump truck, but in this case, that's no dump truck. It's an international cargo frayer. Back in Uganda, you could freely practice sorcery and trepanning with just an associate's degree in witchcraft. Check it out. I like to call it, I have no case and I must scream. Or alternatively, watch me short the power pins on my motherboard with a screwdriver in order to start my PC. Like any good game, we begin by starting Cheat Engine. Also, Easy Anti-Cheat is a very good anti-cheat because it's very easy to turn off. My friend may have done exactly that. And and more. Tell me, Seth, was he punished? Is he banned? No. I imagine robbing the elderly. You wouldn't call them monsters, would you? They're more like uh, walking loot dispensers. Yeah, just cut this part of the script. Station 13, 10 out of 10. Amazing. Spectacular. Don't play it. Imagine getting shot dead in a street, an experience that many Americans can relate to. But as the bullet approaches, you can briefly become invisible. This amazing ability allows you to sneak away from the approaching bullet. However, the only problem is that bullets are typically much faster. As a cultivator learning lunar form from the sunflower refining law and by doing so reversing his sex. Becoming female in this game results in the loss of your penis which can be picked up and sold on the open market. You can even make money off this by regrowing your penis which will upon realizing that you're not meant to have one detach immediately. Each time you harvest a crop of penis you become the dick farmer. I try match users with known sex offender registries so I can blackmail them into selling their lore weave for cheap. I make prints of all my trades and fax them to children in Malaysia just to inspire them. You know those blocks of sandstone you never delivered? They're still missing from my pyramid. And if you don't meet the second deadline, your shoulders will be missing ahead. Assassin's Rush can sometimes glitch into the terrain when combined with summon. Please don't use this in the Chamber of Fate. Or you might accidentally glitch your way under the floorboards and obtain the Sword of Aeons 30 minutes after starting the game. Believe me, the longer you do it, the more sense it makes, or the more warped and psychopathic your reasoning becomes. For example, you're building a wonder and some people drop by to ask what you're doing. Wrong answer, debate Feng Shui. Correct answer, beat them with a club. You can even draw on a blank sheet of paper and it's still gonna work. I know this because Somebody drew a swastika, and apparently they can now use the oven 12% faster. At which point, I start to mock them. I call them gay, and uh, immediately apologize. Unless they identify with that label. In which case, I send a little kiss, you know, to establish dominance. I did originally consider adding Pyro Cynical to the team, but unfortunately, YouTube yes. does not let me feature minors in this video, and the odds are always stacked against you, because the computer cheats, and, unlike you, doesn't require scouts to see the entire map. As a result, I have to cheat, because my alternative is pumping out hundreds of parrots to see even a fraction of what the computer sees, and I'm sorry. 
but they're very loud. Hardcore players are, of course, the vegans of Path of Exile. And we all know there's no such thing as a quiet vegan. And that's when they make for realization. The walls are covered in scratches. The tunnel heats to several hundred degrees Celsius. Clothing ignites, flesh fries, and skin melts off a bone. Each man will dig and claw at the walls in futile desperation, tearing their nails out while their organs boil. And then Randy will drop a cargo pod containing milk. Oh look, a message on the floor. Maybe someone out there will tell me something useful. Then you open it and read it, only to see Dog Butthole, closely followed by Fortnite. Even if you decrypt it, surprise, it's literally a trucker asking for gas. Every single time, the tactical knowledge of where every trucker stops to urinate is vital to the success of your campaign. You know the Great Pyramids of Egypt? Imagine they could fly. Now, imagine you fused it with a Sherman T-34 Calliope and expanded the rocket tubes to a hundred. Police state. Because in a game without contraceptives and reproductive policy, the only means of population control is to arrest everyone. We don't have to build homes because we can build prisons instead. Think of every ship in this game as a crab. Punch through its exoskeleton and there's nothing but soft, tender flesh. The slightest crack in its armor, the slightest puncture in its crusty, and you'll devour the whole thing. They also look delicious, so I tried to recreate them in real life, at which point they became biohazardous and I had to stop. Because Underrail takes place in the Harry Potter universe, but instead of wands, you've got implants you inject into your brain so you can abuse muggles with your mind magic. Thanks, J.K. Rowling. War crimes by practitioners of the arcane are rarely prosecuted, as mages will often teleport out of courtrooms and cast mass Alzheimer's on the judge and jury. This game isn't hard, not because it's not hard, but because video games fundamentally aren't hard. You know what's hard? The circumstances of life, getting a degree, having a stable family. If you a Latin American or Middle Eastern militia looking to expand your services, hit me up. I've received threats from some of the more colorful servers to not mention them by name, or else, what's gonna happen if I don't comply? Are they gonna hire a Bitcoin assassin to run me over with his mobility scooter? Is he gonna stab me with his insulin pen? I don't know, but between you and me, I hate having cum delivered to my mailbox and would prefer to keep it that way. Seth, why you play in a bunch of first-person RPGs more than two decades old? I don't know. Because nostalgia is a hell of a drug, and my emotional cortex is holding me hostage, falsely associating the first time I ever played these games with the positive connotations of being a child. Think about it. The Titanic would have never crashed if it had no life vessels. If the passengers had no option for retreat, they'd plug the hole with their bloated carcasses and save the day. That's also why there's grown-ass men out there wearing Zelda t-shirts in public, because they played before life got complicated, and they relate it to a simpler time. Before mom and dad got divorced, before dad caught yellow fever and came back with a new mommy from the Philippines. They hunt. They hunt monkeys. They corral them in. It's the most ruthless shit because there's a video of this chimp eating a monkey while it's alive. No. It's holding on to the monkey and biting its hips and just pulling chunks of meat while the monkey's screaming like, ah! Due to the nature of my work, I cover some really old and really niche games. Problem is, it's hard to get an original copy, so I depend on friends and family to send me a working copy of Bad Rats 2. Punjabi pre-cracked no virus. But I can see through their lies like rice grains. GGG is a subsidiary of Tencent, which also owns Riot Games, and Tencent is owned by the Dalai Lama. Follow the paper trail, follow the money, and you'll find that GGG and the gold farmers are one and the same. Players will first buy currency from the Chinese orb cartel. The money is wired instantly by Western Union to the Dalai Lama, who pulls the kill switch and bans the player after several days. During those days of decadence and luxury, the player will get a taste for power, which is then cut off. Much like an addict, he craves for more exalted orbs, starts a new account, and tries to turn a new leaf, but we all know how it ends. Here at Deep Rock, we love our green beards. If you hear anyone talk like that, bully them. Look at them. Not a phone in sight. Just people living in the moment. 
dying of malaria. Several people came running through medical, slipped on the space loop, and accelerated themselves face first into the infinite vacuum of space. Security figured out it was the clown, and in true security fashion, also slipped on the space loop. With most of the crew floating around dead in space, the station had to be evacuated. One of the greatest features of this game is custom content, because when I pick a shitty anime faceplate, you get no choice in the matter. You are forced to download the same shitty anime faceplate, which, when inspected closely, reveals instructions on how to make meth. I believe Central Intelligence can employ this in the future. We join someone's game, forcibly download illegal content to their PC, and do a sting operation on their residence. If they start screaming, civil liberties, or probable cause, cite Penal Code 129, Paragraph 27, Subsection C, which states, <clears throat> anyone caught playing Hearts of Iron 4, Europa Universalis, or Company of Heroes 2 is probably a domestic terrorist. There's a mother out there that had to explain to her kids, yeah, your, your father unfortunately passed away in a nutty putty cave. Do you want that to be you? Let this be a lesson, fellas. If she says, I'll be ready in 10 minutes, you've got plenty of time. Take a nap, do your taxes, read a book, but for the love of God, do not leave a car running. Trust me, the money you save will be well worth it. Why? You might even save enough to purchase all the DLC. Once they wake up, they'll complain and bitch about this breach of consent, which is why people generally avoid them. Except RFS81, who is the best boy, because unlike everyone else, he's not programmed to be a bitch. There's a second form of fast travel in this game. It's called swallowing a cyanide pill. This is a form of speedrunning discovered during the Nuremberg Trials. So, what are you in for? I played non-state approved anime. I told the officer she was well above the age of consent. How, how, how old was she? 357, but she had the body of a 12 year old. I tried to explain that it's because she's a half-dragon sorceress. She's very powerful and mistrustful of humans, so she takes on the form of a child. Oh yeah. And she has a huge, bulging food cock. Does this keep happening to you? Do you wish there was a better way? Well, there is. Express. Hey, unfortunately, the sponsor didn't like the integration. However, I don't care. And I'm tearing up this contract. <laughs>